أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ادعوا الله أو ادعوا الرحمن أيا ما تدعو فله الأسماء الحسنى my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In continuation with the opportunity of supplications and prayers and its effect and the coincidence of the month of Ramadan and its relationship, we will continue with our topic. The topic for the night is the conditions, the etiquette and the protocols of a prayers. We know that every field, they have their own language. For example, in the computer science, they have their own language. In diplomatic lines, they also have their own language. Doctors and physicians, also they have their own language where they communicate with each other. Every field, they have their own prot protocols, conditions, and etiquette in order to make their discourse very clear and eloquent. The same thing with the prayers. When we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perform this application, there must be certain rules, conditions, and etiquette in order for the prayers to be accepted and our calls to be answered. For example, one day a man came to Imam Sadiq and told him, Yabna Rasulullah, I have problem with two verses in the Holy Quran that I do not see their effects. Inni la ara ta'wilahuma. The first ayah, Ud'uni astajib lakum, <clears throat> where the Almighty has said, Call upon me and I will be answering your call. He said that I pray but I don't hear the answer. And the other one <clears throat> when the Almighty says whatever you spend in his way you will get replenished. He says that I pay in his way but I don't see the effect, I don't see the return in my hand. The Imam السلام, answered him this. He said, أَمَا إِنَّكُمْ لَوْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُ فِي مَا أَمَرَكُمْ ثُمَّ دَعَوْتُمُوهُ لَأَجَابَكُمْ If you have followed his instruction, the Lord's instruction, in how you present your case, how you ask the Almighty, he would have answered, وَلَكِنْ تُخَالِفُونَهُ وَتَعْصُونَهُ فَلَا يُجِيبُهُ you disobey him. You do not follow the instruction by which he has set the conditions for accepting your prayers. Therefore, you do not see the answers. Sometimes even we don't know what to pray. We don't know should we pray for good things or bad things. We don't even ponder about the results, the consequences of our prayers. If we ask something from the, from the Almighty, and he brings it to us, he fulfills it, then what would be the, the consequences, the results? We are oblivious about that. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَدْعُ الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءُهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا In the same way that he asks for goodness, he also asks for evil things for himself. But unintentionally, meaning that he's hastened his prayers without evaluation of the prayers without knowing exactly what should we ask so there are certain rules certain conditions certain adequate and protocols that we need to commit ourselves and observe in order to see the prayers are answered what are those tonight we will be covering a few of them and inshallah tomorrow we will cover the rest the first condition Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, is that we should know 
Who is Allah? We should have a true meaning, a true understanding of the Lord. The origin of the religion is based on knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awwalu dini ma'rifatu. If I truly know who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he is capable of doing and he is the only source of answering my prayers and he is the most wise the most merciful the most beneficent person then our answer, our calls will be answered the almighty the prophet peace be upon him says law araftum allah haqqa ma'rifatahu lazalat lidu'aikum aljibal if you truly know the essence of allah the way that you should then to your prayers the mountains will be jolted. The mountains will be shaken and will be moving. How effective, this is how effective the knowing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I know that he's the only one who's capable of answering my call. He's the only one out of his wisdom and out of his mercy will be either answering my call or not answering my call. If I know this, the call will be ready for an answer. It is narrated that on the moment that Ibrahim السلام, was about to be launched into fire, thrown into the fire, the angel Jibreel descended upon him and told him, Ibrahim, do you have any need? He said, if the need is to you, no, I don't have anything from you. But to my Lord, yes. He said, what is it? Ya Ibrahim, tell me. He said, ilmuhu bihali yughni an su'ali. The fact that he's witnessing and the fact that he knows exactly what's in my heart and he knows this is the situation better than I do, then it makes me needless to answer him, to, to call upon him. I don't have to call upon him because he knows the whole circumstances. This is how much Ibrahim used to understand the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we get to that level, that we understand the true meaning of the Lord and what He is and what He is capable of, then our ans- our calls will be answered. As the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, when he was posed by a question that why God does not answer our call. He said, because because you are worshipping, asking someone that you don't know exactly who he is. And you're asking for something that you are oblivious about. You do not understand. So number one is knowing the true essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To whom I am talking to. This is number one. The second condition is when we pray, we should pray out of necessity, out of desperation. We should be desperate to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that I have many options and let me ask him if he makes it fine. If not, then I have multiple options. These are rejected. The Almighty emphasizes on the fact of desperation. He says, the one who prays out of desperation to him, then he will answer him. I will give you a few examples. Sometimes going from my home, from my home to my work, I have multiple options. I can go by my car. I can take public transportation. I can take a bike or I can go by walking. So in such kind of incident, I am not desperate. If I miss one means of a transportation, I have the other one. This one is not called out of desperation. I am not desperate. I have multiple options and I will examine my options before I make my selection and my choice. But sometimes we are desperate. Imagine you are a 36,000 feet altitude in the airplane. And the airplane undergoes 
severe turbulations, then what will happen to you? You know that if the entire population of Earth, of the planet, wanted to save your life, seven million people came to rescue, to, to rescue you. But if something goes with the airplane, we are done. It's over. No other entity than God will be helping us, even if the entire planet wanted to rescue us and save us. There is no other option. There is only one way out, and that's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine you are in a ship and then there is a hurricane in the middle of the ocean or sea with those humongous, tremendous waves that could go up to 100, 200 feet and can toy the ship. At that time, you are left with no one. You know, no one can help. No one can exert any assistance if he doesn't do, if he doesn't want. At that time, you ask out of desperation, At that time, you know that all ways, all, all options have been exhausted and there is only one thing is remaining and that is the way to Him, the Almighty. At that time, the answer becomes imminent. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer him. In our case, we should call upon him in time of desperation, even during the time of ease. We should ask with the conscience of desperation. We should not think one second that we are relying on ourselves. The Prophet, peace be upon him, in the middle of night, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, اللهم لا تكلني إلى نفسي ضرة عين طرفة عين أبدا Do not leave me to my Do not abandon me to myself even for a blink of a second meaning that I would not have any choice if he doesn't want to even the easiest thing even things that I am taken for granted that I, I am sure and presumptuous that I will be doing but those minor, tiny, easy things could be a big obstacle. The Almighty teach us how we should proceed. He says, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءَ الله. Do not be presumptuous. Do not say, I am confident of myself, I can do. Unless God's will is with you. Therefore, when we pray, even for the simple things, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, اسألوا الله ما بدا لكم من حوائجكم حتى شسع النعل. Even the shoelace that you want to tie your shoes, ask assistance and help from God. Because believe it or not, that tiny thing could be a big obstacle that you are unable to do. There are many people, one day of their life, they are mighty, they are strong, but at one, at another day, they become helpless. You know, just a three-time world champion of boxing, who was the mightiest person in the world, just a few days ago, he passed away. He needed his blessings, the God's blessings. At that point, everybody becomes so weak. Therefore, we should realize, even at the time of ease, we should depend on him. And the third one is we should prepare our hearts for the supplications. Our heart should be broken. We should show our total obedience and subordination to the Almighty, to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, Inna Allah la yaqbalu du'a'an bi qalbin sahi. God would not accept a prayer from a heart that is just a praying for amusement, just to amuse self while there is no attention of the heart. There is no feeling of total subordination to the Almighty. How should we show our total subordination? 
is when we weep, when we cry and wail. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَخَرُّونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ يَبْكُونَ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ خُشُوعًا Those people who wail, who weep, that will give them more humility in front of the Lord. These are the signs. When you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of your prayers, check your heart. Is it in total subordination and humility? And the sign of it is the tears. The minute the tears comes down, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you full attention. Here is listening to you. As the Imam alayhi salam, al Imam al Sadiq says, Idaq sha'arra jilduk. If your skin is shrugged, wadami'at aynak, your tears came down, fadunak kadunak. Fakat qasada qasduk. You have reached your destination. Only with a few words, you have made your case in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will come back after the break. Ya man la yurja illa fadla Ya man la yus'alu illa afwa يا من لا ينظر ولا بر يا من لا يخاف إلا عدل يا من لا يدوم إلا ملك يا من لا سلطان إلا سلطان يا من وسعت كل شيء رحمته يا من سبقت رحمته غضبا يا من أحاط بكل شيء علم يا من ليس أحد مثله سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا غافر الذنب يا قابل التوب يا خالق الخلق يا صادق الوعد يا موفي العهد يا عالم السر يا فالق الحب يا رازق الأنام سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا علي يا وفي يا غني يا ملي يا حفي يا رضي يا زكي يا بدي يا قوي يا ولي سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back with the segment number 19, 20 and 21 of Dua Joshan Al-Kabir. The theme of segment 19 is to attain distinction. 
And it goes like this. Ya man la yurja illa fadlu. Ya man la yus'alu illa afu. Ya man la yunzaru illa birru. Ya man la yukhafu illa adlu. Ya man la yadumu illa mulku. Ya man la sultana illa sultanu. يا من وسعت كل شيء رحمته يا من سبقت رحمته غضبه يا من أحاط بكل شيء علمه يا من ليس أحد مثله Oh, he from whom nothing is begged save his pardon He of whom nothing is seen save his goodness He from whom nothing is feared save his justice He whose sovereignty alone of eternal, he who alone has a true majesty, he whose blessings extended to all, he whose wrath is suppressed by his mercy, he whose knowledge encompasses everything, he who is without equal. The beautiful words, يا من لا يخاف إلا Adla, he who fear nothing but his justice. We, as a human being, in any community, in any society, we fear the injustice of the ruler. The ruler, the hegemon, the sovereign, is always scaring people due to his might. He can use his force indiscriminately to subdue the population to subordinate the population people fear the injustice of the ruler because it would be very easy for someone like this person who has a military might and power and force can easily transgress and use it against those who he is not pleased with. The criteria for people is to seek just ruler. And there are only very, very few throughout history who turn to be just rulers. For example, in 2002, the Human Rights Commission, in his resolution in 2002, he described Ali ibn Abi Talib to be the fairest governor who appeared in the course of history. Ali ibn Abi Talib was only one of his kind who was just a ruler. Another a just ruler, another example, is the ruler, the ruler who used to live during the time of the Prophet. But he was in Ethiopia, in Habasha, when Muslims used to face persecution and pressure and torture in Mecca, the Prophet asked them to migrate to Ethiopia. He told them, Inna fiha malikun adil, la yudlamu indahu ahad. Go to a just ruler in Ethiopia who would not exert oppression against you. So people would like to see in the ruler his justice. The justice of the ruler is very sought after, is very desirable. But in terms of God, in the case of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the absolute ruler, who is the absolute hegemon and sovereign, his justice is not desired. We run away from his justice. We pray day and night that he would not treat us with his justice. We say, اللهم لا تعاملنا بعدلك Do not treat us with your justice. Why? Because in this two-way relationship between us and the Lord, we are the one who transgress against the commands of the Lord. We are the ones who are sinners. We are the ones who do not keep our promises. We are the ones who always break the contract with the God. We always break our oath. We are the one who, grass, who transgress against others. We are the ones who do wrongdoing. 
So if the Almighty, naturally, if the Almighty Allah treat us with His justice, then we will become all in oblivion. We will be vanished. The entire population on earth will be punished, will be vanished. Therefore, we ask the Almighty not to treat us with, treat us with His justice. We fear the justice of God, rather we ask for His mercy. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are looking for. As the segment says, Ya man wasi'at kulla shay'in rahmatuh. Ya man sabaqat rahmatuhu ghadabah. We know that we are very optimistic to receive the mercy of the Almighty. We are optimistic that He will rescue us, that we will succeed in the hereafter. Not because of our deeds, not because we have earned it. Rather, we are entitled to succeed due to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He has a mercy that engulfs everything, that transcends to everything, that contains everything. Ya man wasi'at kulla shay'in rahmatuhu. No matter how big is our sin, how terrible our wrongdoing, still the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much greater than our sins. Therefore, the mercy of God will contain our sins. As we say in the prayers, we says, Allahumma in lam akun ahlan an abluga rahmatak farahmatuka ahlun an tablugani wa tasa'ani li annaha wasi'at kulla shay. Ali ibn Abi Talib, in the elegant dua of Kumail, he start with this, Allahumma inni as'aluka barahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay. There is nothing, there is no sin, there is no in in entity that can claim that he's deprived from the mercy of the Lord. Even Iblis himself, even the devil himself, on the day of judgment, there are narrations that even Iblis will come hopeful of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because by default, the mercy of God takes everything, extended to everything. And the punishment is only after those that are selected by God. As the Almighty in the Holy Quran says, قَالَ عَذَابِي أُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ أَشَاءُ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ I am only selective in punishing people, in bringing my wrath against selected entities and selected people, while my mercy is extended to everything. It's so extensive that takes everything. Al Hassan al Basri, one of the scholars during the time of Al Imam Zain al Abidin, he would say, Ajibtu liman naja, kayfa naja yawm al Qiyamah. I am so surprised of someone who can win and can succeed on the day of judgment, how he can be successful. Despite the wrongdoings, despite the sins, and despite the punishment of the Lord, how we can become successful. But listen to the reply of Ali ibn al-Hussein alayhi salam, who replied to this word. He says, بَلْ عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ هَلَكَ كَيْفَ هَلَكَ مَعَ سَاعَةِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ I am surprised of someone who vanishes, who goes in despair, who goes in the hellfire, despite the tremendous mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did he lose his way? How he failed on the day of judgment, despite the so many opportunities, despite the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As an example, you do a certain act. <clears throat> if that act is considered to be good, God will multiply that into 10. Man jaa bil hasana falahu 10 amthalihah. 
But when you do a single mistake, a single wrongdoing, only one wrongdoing is registered. But not immediately. The Almighty orders the two angels who write, who corroborate everything that we do on our shoulder, on the right and left of our shoulders. The Almighty ordered them to wait for a period of time. Sometimes it is narrated up to seven hours. Seven hours those angels will wait. Do not write a mistake until we forget, we ask for forgiveness. If we ask forgiveness, that mistake is erased. Otherwise, it will be registered as one. The segment number 20 is to disperse worries. As the segment goes, Ya farij al ham, ya kashif al ghan, ya ghafir al dhanb, ya qabil al tawb, ya khaliq al khalq, ya sadiq al wa'd, ya mufi al ahd, ya alim al sir, ya faliq al hal, ya raziq al anam. O remover of anxiety, expeller of sorrow, forgiver of sins, acceptor of repentance, creator of creatures, truthful in promises, fulfiller of promises, knower of secrets, splitter of seed, provider for a creature. The beautiful word of remover of anxiety. When do we have sorrow and anxiety? At what moment we have anxiety? When we are desperate. When we see ourselves that we are helpless. There is no one can come to rescue us. When I am chronically ill, terminally ill, and I see no hope by the doctors, by physicians, by hospitals, I become desperate. I go into despair. The only one who will come to remove this anxiety and despair is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On those right moments, Regardless whether I believe in him or I make believe not to believe in him, at that desperate moment, all people, all humankind face toward him. As he says in the Holy Quran, it says, وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ظَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ The call is to the idol worshippers. He tells them, in the middle, in the midst of the ocean, when there are turbulences, when there are huge waves shaking the ship, at that time, you know that you are in despair. You know that you are hopeless. You have no one to rescue you. You turn your faces to the Almighty. You look at the Almighty because he's the only one who can remove your anxiety. Segment number 21 is to ask for pardon. It says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika, ya aliyu, ya wafiyu, ya ghani, ya maliyu, ya hafiyu, ya radi, ya zakiyu, ya badiyu, ya qawiyu, ya wali. It says in the translation, O oh Allah, I beseech you, O oh, the high, O oh, the perfect, O oh, the independent, O oh, the rich, the kind, the agreeable, the purific, the purifier, the eternal, the mighty, the believer, the friend. Despite the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Ali, high, where he mentions his name repeatedly, in the Holy Quran with this attribute, the Ali, Wahwal Ali Al Azim, Wa innahu fi umm al kitab ladayna la Ali al Hakim. Despite his high stature, yet he is very faithful. He is devout to whom? To his servants, to his slave, who entrust him. When we entrust Al the Almighty in return, he entrusts us. He put his faith in us. He becomes faithful. One of his beautiful attributes is Al-Mu'min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
grant us in these holy nights and days to learn about those beautiful attributes of the Almighty and get acquainted with them and have full trust in them. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When he, peace be upon him, returned from the Battle of Safin and noticed the graves outside Kufa, he said, O residents of houses which give a sense of loneliness, of depopulated areas and gloomy graves, O people of the dust, O victims of strangeness, O people of loneliness, O people of desolateness, you have gone ahead and preceded us while we are following you and will meet you. The houses you left have been inhabited by others. The wives you left have been married by others. The properties have been distributed among hires. His is the news about those around us. What is the news about things around you?